I'm Kate from GetPharmacyAdvice.com and I'm here tonight to have a discussion with you or at least to give you a quick dis uh, explanation on the food-drug interaction between vitamin K containing foods and warfarin. Now, you may recognize warfarin as Coumadin. Coumadin is the brand name, warfarin is the generic, um, but more likely you'd probably recognize warfarin, the name warfarin, because that's what we would dispense at the pharmacy if you were to be taking this medication. Now, warfarin is a medication that prevents blood clots. Um, it is used, for instance, in those patients that have heart rhythm abnormalities, such as AFib, or just in general in patients that have a predisposition to blood clotting. Um, now, warfarin is definitely one of those drugs that is finicky and must be kept at a certain level in the bloodstream. Now, that's a whole other discussion and another video, but I just want to let you know that it has to be kept at a certain level. can't be too high, can't be too low. If it is too high, then you would be, um, you'd be at danger of having a bleeding event or a hemorrhage inside the body. It's internal bleeding, I guess you would call it. Um, and if it's too low, then you would, you would likely have a blood clot form, which can be lethal. Now, you may be wondering why vitamin K has such a role in uh, warfarin taking, or if you take warfarin. Um, and that's because warfarin actually works by counteracting vitamin K. And vitamin K is important because it is essential for, co for coagulation, or what we know as blood clotting. Now, you do not want to avoid vitamin K altogether because it is definitely essential to your body's health. It is. Um, there are recommended daily amounts and the way you would actually figure out how much uh, vitamin K you need on a daily basis is you would multiply 0.5 micrograms to a 1 microgram of vitamin K by your body weight in kilograms. Now to get your body weight in kilograms you would divide your body weight in pounds divided by 2.2. Now that is to find kilograms of body weight you would take your body weight in pounds and divide it by 2.2. Um, that might be a little bit confusing, I know. But if you have any questions about the calculation, you can just email me at kate at getpharmacyadvice.com. That is C-A-T-E at getpharmacyadvice.com. Um, it might be better understood if you see it in writing versus me telling you or trying to explain it. Um, but so the key to keeping yourself at a, a safe or from you know having a, a clotting event um, especially when it comes to vitamin K containing foods, is you have to manage your diet well. Um, and as I said, you don't have to avoid vitamin K uh, containing foods, nor should you, because you definitely need a daily recommended amount. But just keep that, that source of vitamin K constant every day. You do not want to binge, say on the weekends, and avoid it all week because what can happen is you can end up in ER. And it has happened before. Patients have binged on vitamin K-containing foods over the weekend and have avoided the foods all week. They have ended up in the ER with um, blood clots in the lungs, which are very dangerous. You end up not being able to breathe, and if they don't get to it fast enough, you can actually end up um, suffocating to death and dying, which isn't good. So. Just just make sure you keep your vitamin K intake constant every day, or you know fairly constant every day. Um, and when you first start taking uh, warfarin, your you your dose can be adjusted based on your diet. So um, make sure when you first start, you pick a diet um, of, of the foods you want to um, take in. You know on a on a daily basis or you know a roundabout daily basis, um, and then your dose will be adjusted from there. Um, and so, now, when it comes to vitamin K containing foods, I have this table I want to show you. And if I were a pro, or at least a half a pro, at this video stuff, um, I'd be able to show you directly from the computer. But since I'm not quite there yet, I'll get there. Um, I'll get more advanced. Uh, I'll have to zoom, try and zoom in on it on my computer screen. So let me give it a try. Here we go. Okay, so it didn't quite work, um, the screen, zooming in on the screen with, with the camera. So uh, a few days later, I got a little busy, and then I was figuring out how to record the computer screen so I could just show you exactly the table I wanted to show you in clear view. So here we are. Um, this is the table of food sources of vitamin K. And as you can see, there's a, a category of vegetables, fruit, nuts, meat, and fish, and then there's another category. Um, I guess a good rule of thumb as far as which foods to keep an eye on as far as their vitamin K content are those that are leafy and green. So 
Um, for example, you've got kale, which has quite a bit down here, as you can see. There's 817 micrograms of vitamin K in 3.5 ounces. And then collards, collard greens here, green beans. Those aren't leafy, but they're green. <laughs> Broccoli as well. Um, seaweed has a, a lot. I don't know how many people eat seaweed, but I'd watch out for that if you do. Um, spinach, that's leafy and green, of course. And then fruit is not such a big deal. There's only four over here that they, that, that they want to warn you about. Um, avocado and kiwi, pumpkin and strawberry. They're listed there pretty clearly, I guess. I didn't have to read that. But um, meat and fish really aren't a big deal either. And then eh, I guess pretty much the leafy green vegetables are what you want to watch out for more. The, I mean, these other ones are still important. But the, I guess a good rule of thumb, like I said, is leafy and green. So there you have it. Um, I hope this works. I haven't really tried it yet, but this is the first try, so hopefully it works on the first try. Um, and yes, that's all. Have a great day and come visit www.getpharmacyadvice.com for some great information. We'd love to hear from you and want you to join us, our community, our, to join our community. All right, have a good day. Bye.